Welcome back to Earthbeat, the iPhone 13 Pro. This device is a total mess. Let me know in the comment box why you think Apple is doing everything to let us not repair our device. We will start by removing the front of the device, which is essentially the screen. And to remove the screen, we need to heat up the front of the device thoroughly and make sure that the temperature is at least 80 to 100 degrees Celsius. So previously stated in my iPhone 12 Pro repairability video, the screen is a real pain to remove, which is a great thing because this device is prone to water like no other device. So after a few times of heating the device for five to six minutes, you can see the gap is not really much and we need to heat the device again in order to have a wider gap so that we can insert our tool and start the removing process. I heated up the device for a total of at least 40 minutes before I can even see my first crack and that was a crack that is a little bit wide enough for me to insert my first tool inside the device. Everything should go really fast from now. Once I have inserted my first tool, I just need to go around the device, run the tool in all the sides of the device and make sure that I do not crack the screen. The best way to do this is to add a secondary tool inside the device that will keep the device open in case you accidentally remove the other tool while sliding on the side of the device. We have quite a gap now and the best way to continue removing the screen without being damaged is to apply a little bit of heat every time we see a resistance to our tool and the screen should be easy to remove that way. We need to do the same on the other side you need to hit the device a little bit and then slide your tool on the side of the device to remove the screen slowly. Checking the screen while removing it because I can do it and it won't harm anything and also it is always better to check as you go. So the top of the device, it is the same principle. You just need to heat it up a little bit and you can safely twiggle the screen around so that it can separate from the frame of the device. So at this point, 95% of the screen is removed and I tend to not slide my tools on the top of the device because the cameras and other sensors lie under that area. It is best to not slide your tools in that area because you risk to damage something that you do not see. To remove the top of the device, you can either use your tool, that is up to you, but I'm using some heat to heat up the front of the device a little bit more and then I can slide the screen of the device right and left so that I can remove it safely. So the screen has been disconnected from the frame of the device. It is attached to the device only with the flex cables. So I'm really surprised of what I'm seeing. This device is really different from the other iteration of Apple iPhones. We have a massive camera to the right of the device and also the speaker is integrated inside the frame of the device and not attached to the screen but we still have a flex cable coming from the device going to the front of the screen so let's remove the returning plates hiding the other end of the flex cables coming from the screen of this device this is the flex cable of the battery in order to proceed with our test and everything in this video we need to remove the flex cable of the battery to avoid any unexpected damage so let's go at the top of the device to remove the retaining plate covering the flex cable coming from the top of the screen you can use your metal tool to remove anything inside a device except the battery cable Using a metal tool to remove your flex cable coming from the battery is very dangerous. You can short something and permanently damage your device. The screen is completely out of the device. We have only one flex cable from the screen and digitizer and that small flex cable for the sensor. And I'm really positive that they could have put that sensor inside the frame of the device. This is the inside of the iPhone 13 Pro. So here everything is kind of cramped and it has not been done aesthetically like the other iteration of the iPhones. On other iPhones, the inside is really pretty and everything is nice and clean. This white stuff near the SIM card module is the water indicator. If this one is wet, it becomes red, showing you that you have water inside your device. So the bottom portion is pretty much the same, except the battery which has got a little bit bigger than the other iPhone. They've decreased the size of all the components at the bottom of the device to make a little bit of space for the extra battery that this device needs to feed its huge cameras. 
So we are at the top of the device now. All the cameras are here. We have five cameras in this device. And we can also see the new front speaker integrated inside the frame of the device at the left. And by doing this, they've reduced the notch of this device by 20% compared to the other iPhones. Also, they've redesigned the front facing cameras and sensors together to make sure that it has decreased in size and to accommodate the 20% decrease in the size of the notch. We'll be removing the retaining plate of the cameras to take a look at what's inside. From this view, I can see two flex cables coming from the camera area and connecting to the motherboard. So the bigger camera here, the one at the bottom, is the wide camera. The camera at the top is the telephoto camera and then the camera in the mid is the ultra wide cameras which has been redesigned and it is way better than the 12 Pro Ultra Wide. That's it for the cameras. Let's put back the returning plate and all the screws and continue our testing. You can kind of see a beauty in this triple setting camera. It is huge and it takes almost half of the top of the device, but it's kind of beautiful. The front of the screen, it has been redesigned to accommodate the 20% decrease in the size of the notch. So in theory, without this front component attached to the screen, Face ID should be working because none of the component of Face ID is on the top of this screen. But the new thing here is that small sensor, which is not the speaker. This is the old screen versus the new screen. As you can see directly, the notch got a little bit smaller. You can see also that the notch got a little bit wider. From left to right, it got a little bit smaller. And from top to bottom, it got a little bit wider. The mid section of the screens is different also because the old design had two flex cable and the new design is having only one flex cable. We are going to put everything back together. And the only thing that we will not connect is the front sensor flex cable. This will show us how the device react if you damage that sensor or if it got broken. If the screen flex cable connected, let's go ahead and connect the battery cable and turn on this device. I've been pushing down the power button on this device for a few seconds and it does not power on. Like any other new Apple device, if you disconnected the battery, you need to connect the charger in order for the device to power on. This is kind of scary for someone who does not know the trick. So right now the front sensor is disconnected and only the screen flex cable is connected. That's obvious because we need the screen to continue our testing. Testing the cameras, all aspects of cameras in this device, all features and everything seems to be working perfectly. No issues, nothing. The next part is to test the Face ID. Face ID is working correctly without any issues with the sensor being removed. If you like these repair videos, subscribe to our channel, give us a like, and share our content to your friends and family. Next, we are going to test a call on this device and see if everything works like it should be. As you can see, the speaker is working. That was something I was worried about. With the sensor being disconnected, is the speaker, the front speaker going to work? It is indeed working. And the bottom speaker also is working. So, so far, everything is working perfectly without any issues. And then I started a call again and the device does not turn off when it had shade in front of it. Usually when your device is in a call and you put the device on your ear or you put something that shades the sensor in the front of the device, it turns the screen off. This one does not turn off. So that small sensor attached to the front of the screen is to dim the device or to turn off the screen while you're on a call. I did not also test the brightness, the automatic brightness of the device. The automatic brightness of this device is also linked to that small sensor attached to the front of the screen. So this device can work fully without that sensor being connected and you just have to accommodate for the brightness not to go to 100% if you need it and you have to do the brightness manually you have to adjust the brightness yourself it will not be adjusted automatically and then for your calls the device will not turn off automatically when it sends shade on top of the device that is everything that this sensor does so i've seen a video online where this sensor got swapped and it brought a lot of problems to this device so does it make sense if you disconnect the sensor everything works perfectly but if you 
change the sensor you have all the problems in the world the cameras will stop your screen brightness will stop true tone will stop everything that you enjoy in this device will suddenly stop working so you've seen it if you have a little bit of shade in the top of the device the device will turn off the screen automatically as of now we can say that this sensor is tight software wise to this device apple has made a software lock on every single component on this device if you break your screen on this iphone 13 pro you need a new screen right if you change the screen on this device you will disable face id you're going to disable the camera features one by one one after another also you're going to disable the front facing cameras with everything apple has done to this device i cannot repair it you cannot repair it unless you go to the apple store i can replace your screen you can get your screen replaced by somebody else but all those functionality will not return until apple has reprogrammed the new screen with your motherboard next we are going to add some glue on top of the old tape that this device had already and we are going to use b7000 i have already added b7000 all around the device but at the bottom portion we needed a little bit more so to recapitulate i'm adding b7000 to close this device now because the aftermarket does not have a tape for this device as of now this device is too new to have a double-sided tape out in the market and this is the better way to close and seal this device than just reseal the device with the old tape push gently to make sure that everything sits nicely once that has been done you can insert back the two screws at the bottom of the device the next step is to inspect the device all around to make sure that there is no scratch, no cracks and everything is as it should be. So after the inspection we need to add some retaining clamps for the screen to be pushed against the frame of the device for at least 10 minutes. That will help the glue to cure easily with the screen being sealed properly. I'm using office supplied clamps, you can find these clamps everywhere, it is really good for this kind of repair. I've waited for at least 25 minutes and then we can check the device to make sure that everything is working and no damage has been done. And one last time we need the charger to turn on this device. We need to check the true tone, all the features that get disabled if you damage something. We need to check all those to make sure that while doing this repairability video we did not damage anything. The cameras, everything is working perfectly. Thank you guys for watching. Subscribe, like and share and I will see you next time.